postcards offer matter-of-fact views of things you've never imagined. I don't know when there was a pontoon bridge across the Red River at Montgomery. In this postcard, the world's largest river barge carries locomotives at Avondale. This is how a train crossed the river until Huey built a bridge. There's a new slogan at the New Orleans and Gulf Coast Railway. It says the city that brought us everything boiled and fried now pours on the steam. This railway is the genuine article, a short line freight company in northern Plaquemine Parish. Now, sharing the company's tracks is a blast from the past, taking tourists, school kids, and romantics back in time a full century. Probably uh, three dozen valves up there that you've got to know what to do with, and uh, the gauges that you're looking at are steam gauges and air gauges for the air brakes. And uh, you have two water glasses in it, one for the engineer and one for the fireman, which are probably the most important things in the cab because you've got to know where the water level is in the boiler. It can be a very dangerous machine if the water gets below the crown sheet of the firebox. Johnny C. helped get this 1901 locomotive back on its wheels. Now he's living every kid's dream. He's the engineer of a steam locomotive. I always say a monkey could run a diesel. It takes a real locomotive engineer to run a steam engine. Because of the feel, because of what it, what's going on there in your head and in your hands? Well, a steam locomotive talks to you. You can feel it. You know, you can listen to the stack, and you can uh, listen to the... Uh, uh, the uh, valves or the, you know, the chug that you hear coming out the stack. And that, uh, that tells you what the engine's doing, how hard it's working, and whether you've got enough valve travel, because you're able to set the valve travel with the, what's known as the Johnson bar or reverser. And uh, when you're starting the engine off with a heavy load, you put it, what we call, down in the corner. And you're using a lot of steam when you do that. And as you get the train moving, you start working it back to the company notch, they call it, which is more uh, economical. You're using less steam, and you're working off of steam expansion once you get the thing moving. So uh, there's a lot to listen to and uh, go by, you know, from the sound of the engine. Baldwin Locomotive Works number 1744 was once a rusted hulk about two years ago, these steam enthusiasts found it in Texas. Gary McCord is another of the dedicated restorers who tends the 85-ton engine's huge maintenance needs. She was in really bad condition. When they first asked me if I would come to work for them, I went over in Fort Worth and climbed up on her one day and looked around, and I shook my head, and I thought to myself, there's no way they're ever going to restore this thing or put it back together in operating condition. You're impressed by it, though, aren't you? Oh, very much so. The people back then that came up with all of this stuff were very smart. And in 1901, this was the cutting edge of technology. Pulled along our 1950s era passenger cars, the double-deckers afford a view of the Mississippi River over the levee. The excursion down to Myrtle Grove is only 10 miles, but takes two hours round trip. It's fun to watch the kids' faces, isn't it? It sure is. We need more young people that are interested in this so that as the older guys like John can teach me, and then when I become older, then there'll be some young person that wants to know that I can teach them because there are no schools that you can go to. It's all, you know, on-the-job training. You have to start out at the bottom as a hostler kind of like, you know, a, a grease monkey that gets a locomotive ready in the morning. And uh, then you move up to a fireman and then finally move up to an engineer. But if you can't work on it, you don't understand it, and you can't fix it, then you can't run it. The star of the show, of course, never lets the kids down. The Big Easy, as it's called, belts out another note, another blast of steam. A lot of that's for show, of course, but deep in the hearts of the guys who brought number 1744 back from a rusty grave, there's a genuine passion. My previous career was on the ATNSF or Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. And I quit them in 1993 just to operate steam locomotives because that's what I wanted to do. I'm a fellow that finds diesel locomotives distasteful. We call them dismals, dismal locomotives. 
I'm, uh, I've loved steam all my life. I was born in 1940 and was lucky enough to see the last 20 years of steam. And I grew up wanting to run steam engines, and uh, that's what I do now. It makes you wonder who's having more fun. The passengers are these aficionados of the good old days.